The UK's next lead armoured task force has completed six weeks of challenging training in Canada. As part of Exercise Prairie Storm, 1st Battalion, the Yorkshire Regiment's battle group, tackled harsh weather conditions and terrain to take hold of villages from enemy soldiers. Hannah Gurney was with them. It's early morning in the village of Hetar. As the town sleeps, the insurgents search the horizon for signs of invasion by British troops. This setup may look real, but it's actually all part of an exercise held in the British Army's training ground in Canada. The aim of the troops is to secure Hetar and get rid of the enemy before moving on to their next challenge on the prairie. There are around 2,000 soldiers involved in the exercise. The majority of those in the battle group are from One Yorks, but there's also members of the King's Royal Azars and the Royal Engineers. There's around another 1,000 soldiers playing the enemy. For us, it's been the focus really for the last six and a half months of preparation back in the, in the UK, as well as being the Land Warfare Centre battle group and sort of fulfilling all those tasks. We've had to effectively re-roll as an armoured infantry battle group and make sure we've got enough people qualified to drive and command and gun all of our um, armoured vehicles. This exercise is seen as a sort of get you in package for future operations. So it will allow my soldiers to operate and survive in whichever operation environment we deploy to or could deploy to next year. For this exercise, the Army are using a tactical exploitation system, otherwise known as TES. All the soldiers in their vehicles have sensors on them that send off an alarm if they're shot. If they're badly injured or if their vehicle is destroyed, then they're out of the exercise. If the soldier's hit, uh, the, it'll make a sound, okay, and then using the control panel here, he can flick through, he can see where he's being hit, what action he has to take, if he can take part in the battle. From there, if he's treated by a medic, it'll tell the medic exactly what action they ought to take. Um, what his respiratory levels are, what his uh, pulse levels are, so that the medics can assess him as they would a real life casualty. The troops spend six weeks on the prairie as a battle group. They receive orders from base to move to different locations and have a team of people watching and critiquing their every move. At the end of the exercise, they'll receive a report telling them how they've done and how they can improve. It's been a challenging few weeks for the battle group who've had to contend with harsh weather conditions and difficult terrain. But there's an important end goal for them. If they pass this test, they'll be held at high readiness and will be the first to deploy should war break out anywhere in the world. The need for this battle group to rise to the challenge and prove itself as the UK's lead armoured battle group is key to the Army's future vision. Afghanistan is drawing to a close and so the Army is changing the way it operates. And with it, all the troops need to be prepared for every eventuality. They have to make sure that their personnel are absolutely ready, both physically uh, and mentally attuned to the, to the demands of being at short notice uh, to deploy on operations. They have to have their equipment in good order. And that's one of the things we test here as well. Can they look after a fleet and keep it on the road, all those armoured vehicles, which can be quite difficult to keep going. And then they have to keep their training up. Uh, and so whilst we give them a good foundation here, it's not the end of the road. After here, they'll go off, they'll do more training and they'll keep themselves at that high level of readiness for the future. One Yorks will remain the Lee's Armoured Battle Group for six months before the role is passed to another unit within the 3rd UK Division. It's a lot of responsibility for the troops, but this is what they've prepared for. It's what you train for, there'd be no point doing all this training if... Uh... If we weren't going to utilise it later, obviously um, quite excited about going into the uh, lead armoured battle group role, um, but at the same time a little bit apprehensive as well, um, which is kind of it's a good mix to have really. It's a, it's a big responsibility, but it's exciting as well. I mean, that's why we train. We're out here because we actually we joined the army because we just wanted to sort of stuff out, you know. I think we've benefited from the experiences of Afghan. Um, 
whereas before it was a lot of uh, very generic set rules. I think Afghans opened the horizons and were able to in- implement a lot more new skills within the modern warfare um, that we didn't have previous to Afghan. Back in Hetar and the army have managed to secure the village. This isn't the end of the test for the soldiers though. They're now faced with mounting pressure from the local villagers who are unhappy with the army's involvement. The actors here are from a company which is employed by the army to create a cultural barrier for the soldiers to overcome. I think it's hugely important that soldiers understand um, and get to exercise within a realistic human terrain because in in the 21st century and future um, conflict is always going to be a, a war fought amongst the population and that's what we provide. There are different scenarios put on by the actors that the British troops have to handle appropriately. The troops have to deliver aid, but they're faced with an angry crowd who want to take the boxes away themselves. Soon after, a woman approaches them with a baby who's dying. But when the medic tries to help the baby, the crowd turns on the troops. Finally, a man's brought to the troops with a broken leg. The army medics have to treat the man while being shouted at by the villagers. It's been a long but successful day for the troops who have their senses reset, ready for the next challenge. Hannah Gurney, Forces News in Suffield, Canada.